Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Last year, Huawei launched the Kirin 9000S chip, which is used in the Mate 60 series of mobile phones. When it launched the Pura 70 series of mobile phones this year, two new chips appeared. One is Kirin 9000 S1 and the other is Kirin 9010. Recently, Huawei has officially promoted Pura 70 overseas and introduced these two chips. For example, on the official website of Malaysia, it shows that different mobile phones use different chips. Among them, Kirin 9000 S1 can be regarded as a large core downclocked version of Kirin 9000 S. The CPU is 2x 2.49 GHz plus 6x 2.15 GHz plus 4x 1.53 GHz Cortex A510, and the GPU is also Maliun 910. The Kirin 9010 is a minor facelift of the Kirin 9000S. It has the same 12-core CPU architecture, and the GPU is the same Maliun 910 as the Kirin 9000S. The mid-core and small-core performance has been improved, and the overall performance surpasses the Kirin 9000S. It has a higher energy efficiency ratio and lower power consumption. Low. Many people only pay attention to Huawei's Pura 70 moving to overseas markets, but I think the significance behind this is that Huawei has completely solved the chip problem and is not afraid of being sanctioned. This is the key. China knows that the United States previously suppressed Huawei and did not allow manufacturers, such as TSMC, to manufacture chips for Huawei unless they did not contain American technology equipment. At the same time, all mobile phone chip manufacturers, such as Qualcomm and MediaTek, are not allowed to provide 5G chips to Huawei and 5G radio frequency chips cannot be provided to Huawei. Therefore, Huawei's Kirin chip has become the last song and cannot be OE med. Later, the only products Huawei could buy from Qualcomm were castrated versions of 4G chips. Under such circumstances, Huawei mobile phones slowly shrank overseas markets and were basically only sold domestically. Until last year's Mate 60, Huawei finally had a new Kirin chip, which was 5G. It also solved problems such as 5G radio frequency chips and relaunched 5G mobile phones. But last year, it was obvious that the supply chain could not keep up and mobile phones were hard to come by. At the same time, it was said that chip production capacity was not large enough to meet Huawei's needs. So Mate 60 was not sold in large quantities overseas. However, this kind of Pura 70 is not only sold in China, but also pre-sold in Malaysia and other Southeast Asian countries, as well as in Europe and other countries. This means that Huawei's supply chain problem has been solved, and the chip problem has also been completely solved. This supply chain problem includes chip foundry issues, 5G radio frequency chips, 5G baseband chips, etc. Only by solving these problems can Huawei sell overseas without fear of being suppressed. Last year, the Mate 60 equipped with the new Kirin chip was launched, marking a major breakthrough for Huawei in the fields of 5G radio frequency chips and other fields. Today, the release of Pura 70 further confirms Huawei's comprehensive solution to chip issues. Pura 70's overseas market journey is not just a business expansion, 
the meaning behind it goes far beyond the product itself. This move shows the world that Huawei has achieved comprehensive victory on supply chain issues. From chip foundry problems, 5G radio frequency chips, 5G baseband chips and a series of challenges, Huawei has provided convincing solutions, demonstrating its strong strength to once again compete with the international market. What's even more exciting is that the disassembly report of Pura 70 reveals the astonishing degree of its localization rate. In addition to the main camera using Sony components, almost all components including the core processor, panel, chassis, battery, lens, heat dissipation, acoustic components, etc. have been domestically produced. This achievement not only demonstrates Huawei's own strength, but also symbolizes the rise of China's entire industrial chain. Western manufacturers, which once had a solid market position and huge orders, are now facing unprecedented challenges. Faced with Huawei's strong return, the global market is paying attention to one question, when will Huawei return to the top three in the global mobile phone market, or even become the leader? The answer to this question may be hidden in Huawei's continuous efforts to promote technological innovation and supply chain autonomy. Huawei's story is not only the struggle history of a company, but also the epitome of the rise of a country's technological strength. Pura 70 is more than just a mobile phone model. It is a strong proof that Huawei resists suppression and insists on independent innovation. It tells China that in this era of globalization, mastering core technologies and independent supply chains is still the key to the competitiveness of enterprises and even the country. Huawei's counterattack is not only a counterattack of technology, but also a counterattack of will. In this era of uncertainty, Huawei has used practical actions to explain what true strength is a power that can rise from the ashes even if it suffers heavy losses. Looking to the future, China has reason to believe that Huawei will continue to write more impressive chapters on the global technology stage with its outstanding innovation capabilities and unyielding spirit. And China will also witness how a Chinese company constantly surpasses itself in global competition and eventually stands at the top of the world. The next question is, since chips are not a problem and other supply chains are not a problem, when will Huawei return to the top three in the world? Or even become number one in the world?